friendly DevOps admin David from Trivial Solutions here again. And today we'll talk about running stuff on Nomad. So we already talked about like high level goals that we want from our infrastructure. Like what's the best file system, ZFS, what operating systems are the best. Then we talked how to provision them and get to the level where we can finally, well, almost finally run our workloads on Nomad. And we'll talk about how to run workloads on Nomad first, but there is like other stuff that we need to do, like monitoring, alerting, right? But I figured, you know, these depend on running stuff on Nomad because for instance, Prometheus, Grafana, Elasticsearch, these are system components, but I run them on Nomad, right? So they're part of that. So it's good to know the general guidelines of how to run stuff before we actually run it because the system depends on running stuff on Nomad. Okay, so let's begin with guidelines. What do we want to achieve when we're running stuff? Secrets are in memory and they're from Vault. So Vault has a lot of secret engines, right? But, uh, you know, the main principle is that Vault keeps its root secret key in memory, right? And, uh, well, I store the underlying encrypted storage in console. That storage you can back up, you can encrypt even in cloud, you can make it public, it's encrypted, only you have the private keys, right? But the main principle is that Nomad has a token when you submit a job, right? So you say, I want this vault policy to be able to access these and these secrets, right? So you must submit a job with a vault token to access those secrets. And once you submit a job, you can retrieve those secrets. And what I recommend, of course, and what Nomad recommends, you in every container, you have slash secrets directory Secrets in every container and if you render template files here then they're only rendered in memory so you don't leak your credentials to this because you know you could get like safely a secret from vault right but if you render it to a persistent storage which is not encrypted if you render template to the hard disk well your secret is exposed so instead what I recommend you to do if your configuration has sensitive information or if you're or some private keys just render those under secrets directory this is memory backed if container stops this is deleted secrets do not leak to disk right so i think it's very important for security and uh, okay so we talked about that services and services we just register in console. There's this uh, in Nomad. Sir, this block, curly braces. And here in the job declaration, you can define this at a group or task level. Uh, that then you can expose these services for the entire uh, cluster to you. So. If you say you run like Postgres here and you expose Postgres service, then in the setup we have Postgres will appear like uh, Postgres Postgres Service Console. And everybody can then in your cluster use this DNS name to access your services. So you avoid problem like, oh, you know, the service disappeared, it stopped, it reappeared in another container. Console will figure this out and you can just use this, right? And uh, you always have access to the same service. There are also issues like um, applications might cache DNS entry and then it changes and uh, of course you get errors. You can also add HA proxy so that you can deploy it and it could refresh all the mirrors at the TCP level that you would always get to the existing service on an existing node. 
So yeah, you just register services here. You don't worry, where does it run? You have these nice DNS names and you just use them, right? And also Prometheus metrics, I saw some people that like, they for some reason want to modify by themselves Prometheus targets, right? Modify that YAML file, add all the services. I don't understand why they do that. You could just tell to Prometheus, scrape console configs with certain tags, say Prometheus, and then you can just register console services with that tag and Prometheus will pick those up, right? If services stopped, you deregister the service. Okay, Prometheus refreshes again, sees that that service no longer exists and target is gone, right? So like, I don't understand why people would want to use static targets in Prometheus, but some people do. Okay, and uh, logs, I make that, uh, I use Vector, Vector.io is the website. It's now owned by Datadog and Vector runs on all machines. It's in provisioning layer and it forwards logs to Elasticsearch and I view them in Kibana. I've investigated, uh, there are like more lightweight quote unquote alternatives like Grafana Loki for uh, log storage, but I looked into that and I didn't like that it's not standalone. It relies on something just docs for some reason assume S3, right? For me, like I prefer bare metals, bare metals rock for me. So why can't you just make a service that's like completely standalone like Elastic? You spin up three instances, you connect them together. They're highly available. They replicate each other. They manage their own storage and that's it, you know, but you know, that's just one of these, my rants. <laughs> Okay, so we have this, like, we have safe secrets, they're in memory, services, we can register them in console, we don't deal with uh, server IPs, logs are forwarded into one place so that we can look into them. Also, we have Prometheus metrics, and of course, we can access them in Prometheus or Grafana, right? So now we'll talk about certain job tiers and what usually happens when you run workloads. What kind of jobs do you run? And I'll start from the easiest to the absolute hardest uh, level. And you can, I imagine you can run pretty much everything you want. Because as far as I'm concerned, Nomad job, like running container in a node, I don't see it as different as a system D service. Like there are some details that are different, but in general, you can run pretty much anything you want in Nomad. So. If I can run it as a job and 99.999% of the time I can, I run it as a job. So, okay, so let's talk about jobs that usually need to be run. So the easiest one is stateless service. This is like some, you want to run some Prometheus exporter for a certain thing, right? So you just deploy it. It might appear on any machine uh, or say some job like few times happened that, you know, certain machine has this certain type of CPU and it, it, it's better to run job on that CPU, right? So what do you do is uh, you can put job affinity. I will not go into details. You can find all these in the documentations that certain job prefers to run on machines with like certain label and you can put label, you know, this, this CPU is AMD Ryzen, whatever, you put that label on the node with provisioning and then you can configure job that it would prefer to run on such node. And it's not like a hard uh, like preference, like constraint, you can put constraint that it will only ever run on that. But you know, if it doesn't have to, but prefers that, I like that because, well, then if you like need to provision that machine, like upgrade Linux kernel or something, you will have to restart your node. Then you stop the machine. The job has affinity preference to run there. Okay, it prefers to run there. No such server exists. So temporarily it will run somewhere else, right? Then it runs somewhere else. You upgrade Linux kernel, you back the machine up and then node you're scheduled to run it where it ran again, right? So, okay. 
And let's talk about high availability. And I mentioned high availability is important. You want to be up if data center or server is down. So if so, you have a few modes of high availability. There are types of services that they assume that they're the only one running, like only one instance. And if two instances run at the same, then that's bad. So you can only run one. Well, not a big deal. You just run one by default, right? And uh, if that server goes down, okay, Nomad sees that server is down, then I just reschedule it somewhere else. And that's it. So that's like a high availability with pauses until you get rescheduled. Or you can just run more instances of a, of a highly available service. That's a, that you can assume that nothing bad will happen if many will run at once. So this is like a HA proxy or engine load balancer. You can run many at one time, right? So this is pretty easy, not much to talk about here. So another thing is I run stateful services. I run databases, I run blockchain nodes, I run all sorts of stuff on like uh, within a stateful manner. So how do you do that to Nomad? So obviously what applied in stateless service doesn't apply here because you don't want to, okay, you have a Postgres instance running in its database. You can't just say, oh, reschedule it somewhere else. You lose all your data. So what do you do that? So you do two things. You add a meta label on a node that you want to run say postgres for something you add labels on those nodes so i can just visualize it so you have servers say three servers and we want on two of these servers to run the postgres node so you add a label on these two nodes right and then you create a ZFS data set for those two nodes as well. And that ZFS data set, if you just create it alone, nothing will happen, but you need to configure Nomad and expose it as host volume. You can read about this in documentation that Nomad sees, okay, this host has so-and-so volume, right? So I need to, I can use it. I can give it to the machine, right? So, with these two labels configured, you then configure job that job type system, and you can put constraint that job runs only on those labels and uses this volume. So then if you run the job and you have like say thousands of servers, if only two, these two labels exist on these servers, your job will only ever run here. And that's how you solve a problem. You can run anything anywhere you want right and you can still have that nice overview of uh, seeing like nice dashboard of nomad what jobs are running on what server topology so you can run stateful services like that and it's super reliable because you're just using local uh, volumes right you're not using container storage interface which i will rant about a bit <laughs> well, wait did I talk about it? Oh, oh, and high availability, high availability as it's important, high availability now has to happen at the application level. So, right. So usually typically Postgres instance, if you run just one instance, it's not highly available. If it's down, then, uh, you know, Postgres is down. So what do you do then? I use Patroni to run Postgres in a highly available mode. Uh, so if so, if I use Patroni, then these two nodes will connect to console, figure out which one is the master, which one has to follow what, and then, you know, if one node goes down, a uh, switchover will happen and things should just keep on working. Hopefully, one time, a few times switchover didn't happen automatically, but... <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so anyway, so the highly available services that are stateful, like Elasticsearch and Postgres, you just assume that applications will figure out, right? Which one is right, uh, like which one is the leader. And uh, you know, then if you want to run Postgres somewhere else, like if you're running Patroni, this is leader and you want to move this somewhere else. So you just remove those labels 
you send ZFS data set over here, add those labels, right? And you uh, copy, yeah, copy the same data set and then container just runs again and things just work again. So you can move stateful data sets anywhere you want with ZFS end and it's pretty fast, half gig a second to propagate data somewhere else. So yeah, so I will rant about CSI a little bit here. <laughs> uh, container storage intent, uh, interface, Nomad supports this, but I don't use it and I don't really feel it's needed. I just, I can run anything like this and it's super reliable, it ho goes locally to this. You don't need to build like Ceph and that is your, you know, block storage for database. You have no idea really how reliable it is. Maybe it will stop working, maybe drivers have bugs. You know, you just bind your stateful data sets to local file system. This is the most reliable way to do that. So it's super simple. That's how I roll, that's how I run stateful workloads on Nomad, right? And so far I never had any issues really. So, and another, the third hardest job type is where you, you might need to like generate config for a separate node, like they have different IP addresses. This is essentially the same. Uh, same complexity as if you had to SSH to every machine separately and configure systemd service and like configure peers and whatnot, like different config on every node. Well, you can work around that, interpolate like nomad labels that are different on every node, but that might not always be possible, right? There's only so much you can do. So in that case, I just gener I just write like some scripts like in Golang that would just generate my job definition, like with groups and etc. And then I, I ran this one crazy service where you need to run like over 10 instances on one node and they each have to increment port strides, right? So you don't want to edit them manually by hand <laughs> because you know, it's very error prone. So I just wrote a little bit of code to generate all that service. And it was like, uh, I don't remember it was, 17,000 line of scope, it doesn't matter. But you know, if you need some super complex setup, like very custom stuff runs on every node and every config is different and you can't really generate it, interpolate it as one node. Well, then the worst case you can write a script and that will generate your job to be run and you can generate anything then. So yeah, so I talked about uh, specifics of how I run Nomad jo jobs in Nomad cluster. If you have any suggestions or any tricks, you know, feel free to leave a comment. All right. So this has been David from uh, trivialsolutions.io. Peace. I'm signing out.